the following is presented by CrewRoundTable.com Podcast Network. Welcome to Hot Takes with Gino, an informal discussion of topics affecting those living in the greater Toronto area. For more information, visit CrewRoundTable.com. Welcome, friends, to the first episode of Hot Takes with Gino, presented by the Crew Roundtable Podcast Network. As you heard in the opening, this is an informal discussion, because it is primarily my opinion on some topics that I have found while I've been doing research to bring topics to the Crew Roundtable. Uh, sometimes on the Crew Roundtable, we have between four and six panelists discussing any given topic, uh, which would affect people in and around the greater Toronto area. And uh, as I'm looking for topics, sometimes I find a topic that does not necessarily lend itself to a panel discussion. That's what I hope to bring to you going forward with Hot Takes with Gino. Uh, For those in the journalism profession, you know that a hot take is pretty much your first cut at a topic. Um, It's uh, informal. Um, The uh, research that goes into it uh, is not as extensive as if you were putting together a featured article. Um, it's simply here's the news and here's what we think of it at first blush. Uh, so the topic that I am going to be speaking to you about is an article that I found um, published by uh, CBC News, and this came out on January the 11th. Uh, it is the the headline for the topic is, or the headline for the article is what to do if you're in one of Toronto's nearly 200 daily traffic collisions. Uh, and according to Toronto Police, there were 70,004, so over 70,000 traffic collisions in Toronto in 2016. And the reason why I want to speak about this topic is uh, I do have some experience. Uh, I've worked in the field of insurance for quite a while, um, primarily as an automobile adjuster. I have investigated, negotiated, and settled hundreds of automobile accident claims in Ontario and in other provinces in Canada, so that's a little bit of my background. Let's jump into the article itself. So the article begins by stating that there are, uh, as I said in the headline, nearly 200 daily traffic collisions in Toronto, uh, over 70,000 collisions according to the Toronto Police in 2016. So if you are a motorist on the streets of some of the busiest highways in North America and the world, in Toronto and the greater Toronto area, what happens when you are involved in an accident? What should you do? Uh, These are some of the tips that the article gives. Uh, So it says, first things first, if you're in an accident, call police and any emergency services that are needed. Well, that pretty much goes without saying. Uh, You should get in touch with the proper authorities if an accident happens. However, there has been a change to how the police handle accidents on site. Uh, The article does mention that in March of 2016, police changed how they respond to collisions. This is vitally important for you when it comes to your insurance rates going forward. And I'll explain why soon. Uh, Getting back to the article, uh, it says that uh, the police will respond to major uh, to major crime scenes. So, for instance, if there is evidence of criminality, so an unlicensed, uninsured, or impaired driver, police will attend the scene. However, if there are only minor injuries, and by minor injuries we define that as soft tissue injuries, so your whiplash injuries, uh, things of things of that nature, no broken bones, no concussions, or anything like that, soft tissue injuries. Minor injuries and property damage not exceeding $2,000, police will not attend. So, why is this detrimental to you if you're involved in an accident? The reason why is you have to put yourself in the shoes of an insurance adjuster. So, I'm at the other end of the, of the line and I'm taking information down from you. Well, the other person's insurance adjuster is going to be going through the exact same process with them. They will get one version of events. I will get one version of events from you. The police should be on the scene to offer that unbiased, immediate version of events. When they show up on the scene, their notes 
are vitally important to helping someone like me assign fault for the accident. Having the police show up on scene gives, as I said, that unbiased third party uh, record of what happened because the police will speak to both parties. As an insurance adjuster dealing with automobiles, likely I only speak with you. I only get your view and then I speak with the other insurance adjuster. And if it comes down to a he said, she said uh, situation where there are no injuries, most of the time liability ends up being shared because at the end of the day we have to get vehicles repaired, we have to get claims processed, we have to get things taken care of. So if there are no injuries involved, there is something called a fault determination rule. These are rules set up by the province of Ontario and they cover you know 99 percent of accidents out there, your basic rear ender, fender benders, uh, left turn situations. Um, there are rules set up, we apply the facts to the rules and the rules tell us who is at fault for the accident. That's part of adjusting the claim. It's investigating to find the information so that you can make a reasonable decision on what happened at that time. Without the police there to give you that unbiased record of what happened, and sometimes police will come and they will lay charges after the fact for the accident. Now they do mention a little bit of that in here where they say that uh, sometimes uh, you are encouraged to go to what is called a collision reporting center. In the city of Toronto we have two, one in the east end of the city and one in the west end. Uh, you either drive your car in or it gets towed there, but that's where you make your formal report. Uh, and sometimes police do lay charges at the collision reporting center, but I will tell you from my personal experience, once the vehicles are moved from the accident scene, it is very hard to go back and determine what actually happened. If you are involved in an accident, the first thing that you want to do is you want to take a picture of the scene. You want to show where the vehicles are in relation to each other at the time of the accident. Because if you get into a situation where it's normally a lane change situation where both parties could be at fault, you want a picture of your car in your lane, established in your lane, with the other person coming into your lane. That's what you want to show. This is evidence that you can show someone after the fact that supports your version of the events. The article goes on to say, well, what if you didn't do anything wrong? Well, you don't know if you didn't do anything wrong. That's the whole point that, that's the whole reason we have adjusters. It's very rare that it's a cut and dry situation unless it's a pure rear end situation. And even then, even then, if injuries are involved, we're in a different, it's almost as if we're playing a different sport. If injuries are involved, we get into shared liability situations. We get into situations where other people can have uh, other people can be shown to be negligent. Okay, so I'll give you a quick example. If you're uh, in your vehicle and you rear end somebody, if the front of your car makes contact with the back of another car, you're at fault for the vehicle damage. It doesn't really matter what the person in front of you did. But if you get into a situation where there are now injuries to the other person, say the other person was talking on their cell phone, say the other person was distracted while they were driving, and you ran into the back of them, that's shared liability. Because yes, you hit them, but they contributed to their injuries by being distracted, by being on the phone. That person being on the phone does not take away any of the liability that you have for their vehicle damage. So that's something that the article does not go through and it does not explicitly state. The article places a lot of emphasis dealing with um, uh, hiring, hiring legal representation. And that's good on the injury side. But when it's just your vehicle, there are laws against suing in Ontario. Your insurance coverage has provisions in it that prevent suing for vehicle damage. You can try because you know, whenever you go to the courts, you never know what's going to happen. You can try, but I'd be very surprised if you were able to sue successfully for vehicle damage in Ontario. So the article goes on to say what you should do in the event of an accident 
uh, and it focuses primarily on injuries. Now, there's some good in, good information here in the article that applies to every situation. Uh, the article says um, taking pictures of the damage done to your vehicle, the other person's vehicle, documenting your visible injuries, and any documents provided by a physician. These are all things that you should keep on file and provide those to your insurance company when the time comes. Um, but again, the 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 main thrust here is that there are changes in the way that police attend collision or sorry there are changes in the way that police attend collisions and that means that the information that used to be collected by them uh, which is something as simple as collecting the insurance information of the other person involved in the accident you require that information especially if you feel that you are not at fault for the accident you require the information of the other person involved in the accident because if they either do not have insurance or they're not a licensed driver that can affect how much you're going to pay when the damages uh, when the damages are addressed to your vehicle it can affect the payment of your deductible so you need that other person's information so what I would suggest is that anyone who is involved in an accident the number one thing that you do and assuming that everything assuming that you're physically fine is you get out everyone has a cell phone everyone's got a a high performance camera that they carry around with them now you take photos of everything you take photos of your vehicle as it sits at the time that it was hit you document the scene you take photos of the other person's vehicle and especially the other person's license plate you may not be aware but with the license plate you can pull the owner of the vehicle and in Ontario we have the right databases in place unlike other provinces such as Alberta where what I'm going to describe to you is almost impossible but in Ontario with someone's license plate you can run a report that will give you their insurance and then you can find out if they had valid insurance you can get you can give that information to your adjuster so that they can get that information for you. If you didn't get the other person's name, address, phone number, insurance company, uh, policy number, as long as you have a picture of that license plate, a clear photo of that license plate, they can find the insurance related to that vehicle. So you should be documenting the scene yourself, taking photos of hopefully the other person's insurance information, exchanging information with them, because that is the information that you have to give to your insurance adjuster. And from the scene, very important, the first person that you call, if you don't need the police or if the police are not coming, the first person you call before you take your vehicle anywhere, before you do anything, before you leave the scene, is you contact your insurance company. Because your insurance company will help you control where your vehicle goes from that point. You've all seen, when you're driving on, on the highways and byways of Toronto, you've all seen tow trucks perched at the side of the road waiting to swoop in and hook up a vehicle in case something happens. Now this is not to disparage the towing industry, but once your vehicle is hooked up on a tow truck, you have lost some control over your vehicle. I can tell you horror stories of vehicles that were put on tow trucks brought to shops and were eventually abandoned at the shop because we could not get the vehicle out of this shop that we call bandit shops so if you contact your insurance company right away they will be able to tell you the person that you're dealing with either the tow person that's there or they will send their own tow company they will tell you tell your tell the tow person to bring your vehicle to this spot which of course the first one is the collision reporting center they will be able to help you control where your vehicle goes so that you know where your vehicle is when the time comes to actually make repairs or to secure that vehicle that helps to speed up the process of your claim because there's nothing worse I can tell you from my experience there's nothing worse than me spending four or five days just trying to locate a vehicle People sometimes don't even know where their vehicle has been taken. When we cannot locate a vehicle, that adds an incredible cost in time and dollars to the claim, which means that you're not receiving your settlement, you're not receiving your repairs, your claim is taking longer than it needs to, and you are being inconvenienced. Finally, the article goes on to say, what happens to my insurance? Now, this is more of an underwriting 
than a claims uh, discussion, but from an underwriting perspective, I'll read to you what happens here in the article. So the article says, what happens to my insurance? Uh, the best way to keep your insurance premiums down is to have the cleanest driving record you possibly can. Well, yes, of course. But if you do get into an accident, the article says that many insurers offer something called first-time forgiveness, which means your premium won't be raised if it's your first incident. If you get into another collision after using your first-time forgiveness, that could have an impact on your premium. So the number of claims, the severity of your collision, your policy, and your individual provider are all factors that go into whether your premium goes up or stays the same. And I am very happy that they say at the end of the article, if you're not at fault, your premiums won't be impacted. So if you are not at fault, you have nothing to fear by putting in a claim. Some people believe that uh, they should never put in a claim at any point and not let the insurance company know anything that's going on in their lives. That is false. If you are not at fault, and once again, I can tell you from personal experience, I know people who have had three, sometimes four claim incidents in the same year. They had a string of incredibly bad luck, but they were not at fault for the accident. Their premium has not increased because your premium is a measure of how much risk is involved to insure you as a driver. And if you are not at fault and you're not causing accidents, there's no change to the risk. Now that's a very general and 30,000 foot view of underwriting for automobile insurance, but this is one part of the article that they do get right. Takeaways from this. If you're involved in an accident, you document the scene, you get the information, all the information that you can, assuming that there are no injuries, because as I said, if there are injuries, we're dealing with a much different situation. Uh, liability is, can be shared uh, when it comes to injuries, and I'll give you a quick example. Uh, you're in your vehicle, you rear-end another car. Uh, if the front of your car hits the back of another car, then you know, 99 times out of 100, you are at fault for that accident, no matter what the extenuating circumstances are. You are at fault. Now, if you hit the other vehicle, you rear-end someone and you cause injuries to that other person. Uh, let's say that the person in the vehicle in front of you, say they were talking on their phone, they were distracted for, for whatever reason. Uh, that may have contributed to you hitting them, causing their injuries, but that's on the injury side. Them being on their phone is no excuse for you rear-ending their vehicle. You are behind, you are the following vehicle, you have to leave the proper following distance so that no matter what happens to the vehicle in front of you, you have time to stop. That's your responsibility to drive defensively. So, in summary, the article from CBC News, uh, this is from cbcnews.ca, uh, what to do if you're in one of Toronto's nearly 200 daily traffic collisions. Uh, Toronto has some of the most congested roadways in North America, it has some of the busiest roadways in the world. Uh, the 401 at some points is 16 lanes wide. Uh, there are thousands of vehicles on the roads every day in the greater Toronto area. And I hope that you found the information in this podcast helpful. I pray that you never have to use it. And with that, the first episode of Hot Takes with Gino comes to a close. Uh, please visit us on the web at crewroundtable.com. There you can find all the information that you need to subscribe to the shows within the Crew Roundtable podcast network. Uh, you can subscribe, of course. I encourage you to subscribe to our main show, which is crewroundtable.com. Uh, it's one of the best shows out there for all the hot news in the greater Toronto area. I strongly recommend the episode that we did on the legalization or the coming legalization of marijuana. Uh, it's one of my personal favorites. And as we come to a close on this episode, I would like to remind you that even though I pray you never have to use this information, if you spend enough time driving in the greater Toronto area, you know that it's not a question of if, but when are you going to be involved in that accident with your automobile?
please visit us at crewroundtable.com on the web, and you can also subscribe to us in iTunes by searching for Crew Roundtable. Take care, everyone.